I don't care what they do in private, just as long as they don't shove it down my throat. And that was seen as a liberal, yeah, open-minded take. When I told my mum I was gay, I mean, this is 25 years ago, you know, one of her first instincts was, well, the rabbi doesn't approve, you know. Well, now, at our synagogue, the rabbis are okay with it and they do you know, lesbian and gay blessings there and things like that. So people do evolve and, and communities evolve. And I've no doubt, I've no doubt my dad would have been fine with it. Like, I've no doubt, you know, um, it just takes time. And it, it also, also, you know, it's an abstract thing. But when people meet the partner or they just see, meet the friends and they go, ah, oh, it's fine, you know. And almost all of my friends growing up were straight. And none of, they're all still my friends. None of them have any remotest issue with me being gay or anything. It's, it's really not that, it's not that interesting. No, but I think that it, it's, it's a really important conversation to have because there are still people that aren't able to live in a liberated way as oh, they yeah. should be able to. And also I think, you know, we grew up in a particularly homophobic and just strange time during the sort of 80s and 90s it's it wasn't like it is today where we're having really open chats and there are moments to mark the celebration around Mm. it it was you know a very fearful time for people wanting to come out this is how it was you'd you'd watch tv and you know once every couple of months there'd be kilroy was this was this program that was on in the mornings on the bbc and it was He'd be walking around the audience. It was a bit like a sort of Oprah Mm -hmm. Winfrey type show. And and every couple of months, there'd be a sort of fairly incendiary, um, often quite lurid sort of gay related episode. Like, you know, these gays want to get married or these gay people want to adopt or these gay people think that, you know, it should be allowed to to teach about homosexuality and sex education in schools or, or whatever it was. And... The majority, the vast majority of the studio audience would be against homosexuality by default. And uh, you'd have a few people who would be out on the show talking and they would sort of treat it a bit like freaks. And I would talk to people and I would sort of sound them out on, on the subject, you know, when I was meeting new people. And somebody would say, a very common response was, I don't care what they do in private, just as long as they don't shove it down my throat. And that was seen as a liberal, open-minded take. If you met someone and they said that, you thought, oh yeah, okay, they don't hate me. Um, And and that's amazing. But there was so much fear about AIDS Mm. as well. And and you have to understand that uh, in the 80s and 90s when when you look at, what it was to be gay in this country, you, you have to understand that. You also have to understand section 28, which banned the promotion of homosexuality in schools, which came in when I was about 14 or 15, um, where, whereby you could not mention the existence of homosexuality as a teacher for fear of being sacked and prosecuted. I think certainly being sacked. I mean, it's, it's not long ago is the other terrifying thing. No, it's not long ago. And actually it was repealed repealed not that long ago. Things like gay marriage weren't even a concept. People weren't really talking about gay marriage. No. Weren't really. There's an episode of, uh, I think this morning, um, probably in the Richard and Judy era where there's a gay wedding on the show and it is just seen as the biggest freak show in the world, you know. I mean, they're celebrating it. Um, but it's just seen as the most bizarre thing, two men getting married. I mean, and this is something that you, yeah, you're internalising. I'm not sure, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure there weren't many people that you could talk to about those feelings or the fear that you must have had growing up as a teenager. No, not really. But when I was 16, I met David Williams, who was, um, who had a girlfriend, but would, we'd go out, I'd meet him, we'd go to the theatre. I was 16, he was 19. Oh no, I, actually when I, we met, then but the next year we were in a show together at the national youth theater and then we started socializing so i would have been 17 he would have been 20 and he had this beautiful girlfriend katie but we'd go to the theater and then i'd meet him at the station and he'd be wearing a skirt and um tall uh, and um, long black socks and hair clip and lipstick and makeup and I'd go oh my god <laughs> and people would stare at us on the tube and so we, he he 
kind of pushed me, propelled me in a way to be a bit more out there and a bit more, which obviously we were in our comedy. Um, he had a fearlessness about him. We had a girlfriend, but he, 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 there was a queerness to him. And so he, he, he moved everything so far, uh, that I had to move a bit with him and, and become less apologetic, um, about who I was. So, I mean, I really put that down to him. And, and I remember calling him and I'd known him for years and years and years. And, and I came out to my, uh, mum, I think 98, 99, and I, called David up and I said even though we would see each other Monday to Friday every day but I think it was a Friday night and I called him up and I said you know I might be a little bit fragile a little bit tender on Monday because I I've just had this big conversation with my mum and told him told her that I'm gay and he was really great about it and said well that's brilliant that you did that and you know how wonderful and you'll be able to be the person you are and you'll be able to go dating. And he was really supportive and loving. And, you know, we ended the call and there's a beat and then the phone rang and I picked it up and it's David goes, you never told me you were gay. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. And then just hang up. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, which is exactly. And which it's David perfect. was like, David just saw it as kind of fun and funny and silly <laughs> and daft and an opportunity for humour, which, you know, obviously we did in our, in Little Britain, you know, uh, uh, dressing up as everything. And so... Um, it was really healthy for me to have someone like that in my life offering a totally different view because he'd also grown up in the suburbs, but he, you know, he was quite a rebel himself. Mm, I love when you meet people that bring out your own inner fearlessness because we've all got it. Yeah. It just depends on the environment you've been brought up in, what you've got going on. But when you meet those people who drag you out of your comfort zone and take you to sort of the the boundaries you're not even sure are there that is exciting and I think it's it's brilliant because you've got people like that who who pull out that fearlessness and in the same way and you can be influenced in a really positive way but I think on the other end of it when you look back to the 80s and 90s where you've got people who are openly being homophobic it's because they're just simply going with crowd mentality and there's so much to be said for that in, in a negative way and a positive way that people just go oh everyone else is thinking this so I'll just go with that you see it now even on social media people jumping on negative bandwagons just to sort of be part of the crowd and it's mm. actually so liberating when people take you in a whole other direction yeah and so Little Britain was a very queer show and we played you know transvestites and gays and you know we were keen to shock and celebrate and challenge people and how comfortable were they with this and you know now it's viewed from quite a different perspective but at the time we were doing it it was quite a sort of uh sort of lefty liberal way of challenging the status quo by being unapologetically shamelessly queer on primetime bbc 